Thank you to be with us is still Africa today and we are live on four platforms Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and our website www.africtoday.com. If you watch us from Nigeria, just go ahead download Africa Today apps and you will be able to watch us live directly from your smartphone. I have a pleasure to have here another guest. Welcome to Africa Today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Please introduce yourself to all Africa Today viewers who watch us now. Okay. Uh, I should say good afternoon or good morning wherever you are. Uh, my, <laughs> name is, <laughs> my name is Telama Miyabe. I'm a professor of mathematics at uh, the University of the District of Columbia. And I'm also uh, uh, an adjunct professor at Howard University. Uh, I am the executive director of the National Congress for Democracy, which is uh, uh, an organization within the African diaspora that uh, deals with uh, issues of democracy in Africa. And we're focusing on the region of Central Africa, but particularly in, for Congo Brazzaville. And so uh, my, my uh, purpose is to basically try to fight f to bring democracy in Congo Brazzaville and some of these other African countries. Yes, thank you so much for mm -hmm. this very good introduction. Uh, mm -hmm. We was in the big party last time, it was last Friday, and uh, we was in the party uh, organized by Watch Democracy Group organization. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you was there. And yes. Why you, you decide to go to that party? Oh, okay. Well, the uh, party was organized by uh, Watch Democracy Grow. Yes. And the purpose of the party was, first of all, a New Year, uh, a New Year party. But it was also to bring uh, the different organizations within the African diaspora, to bring them together to establish networking, and to also get Africans who have different organizations to get a chance to know each other, network, Mm -hmm. and um, and uh, have the idea of basically um, networking to try to see how as a different organization, African organization in the U.S., we can uh, work together for the, for the betterment of people of Africa and people of African descent. So that was the purpose of us, all of us coming together for networking purposes. Okay, for networking purposes. Yes. Uh, Okay, um, I know um, your organization also deal a little bit about democracy in Africa. And what do you think about the democracy in Africa? Well, the democracy in Africa, um, that's a big, uh, difficult question to <laughs> ask. <laughs> okay. Um, I have to say that from my perspective, uh, that uh, economic development, uh, sustainable economic development cannot occur if we don't have uh, a democracy or uh, a system of good governance. Um, I believe that democracy and good governance are key ingredients to have uh, sustainable development in Africa. Um, one of the idea that is at the center piece also of uh, development, I mean democracy and sustainable development is the notion of term limits. Uh, you can see in Africa today. I think you're from Cameroon. Yes. Uh, I can. I'm from Congo. Mm. And if you see, particularly in our small Central Africa region, where governments are changing constitutions and presidents are staying in power for a very, very long time. Uh, in my perspective, uh, growth can only occur within the country when there is a, a new blood that enter into the system. That's part of what the process need to be. When you have a president who have been in power for 40 years, 50 years, uh, basically they, they are not there to necessarily work for the development of the country. They are, they are simply there to serve their personal interest and the interest maybe of the ethnic background. 
Yes, I know we don't have a lot of time to speak about all of that. Maybe yes. we'll, we will have a special, we will, uh, we will invite you for a special interview where you can talk more about your organization and what you do for to promote democracy in Africa. And what do you think, why in Africa most of presidents stay long and how we can change that? Okay. They stay long because uh, our, our system of checks and balances are not in place. Okay. That the rule of law are not being respected. Okay. Uh, and that's why I, I keep on saying that mm. democracy and good governance are key ingredients for development. Uh, and since our system of checks and balances are not in place, so what you basically have within a country is to have a president who has all three powers of the executive, from the executive, the judiciary, and the legislative. See, you have a system and balance in most democratic countries where all these systems are basically there to control the other systems and they are independent systems of power to basically uh, uh, prevent that uh, abuse of power takes place. In our African countries, what we see is that the president is the executive, is also the judiciary, and is also the legislative. So he basically has all the power and power corrupt mm -hmm. and absolute power corrupt absolutely. And so this is one of the reasons why you found corruptions in most of our African countries because our institutions are not our lives. We have constitutions, but no one within those African countries, some of the African countries, not all of them, no one is there to respect the constitution. And every president can desire to change the constitution whenever they want to, want to change the constitutions because they have all the power to do so. But you see in America, for instance, if you look at the history of America, when the constitution was written and ratified, there was no term limit in the constitutions. Term limit basically came 150 years later when President Roosevelt, uh, t uh, I think it was Franklin Roosevelt, came into power in 1933. And of course, there was a particular circumstances at that time. Uh, the country was going to crisis. Um, they have a, a political crisis. It was World War II that was taking place. They have economic depression. And so because of those circumstances, the president, Roosevelt, was the only president in the Constitution of the United States who was elected four times, served three times, three terms, excuse me, but then the fourth term he died in office. But when George Washington was elected the first president of the United States, he served two terms and it became a convention that every single president that came after him only served one, two, only served two terms. So my point is that for us to have in Africa, to have democracy, we need to have leaders who, have, who respect the rule of law, who are visionary leaders, who, can, who are coming to serve not themselves, not their clan, uh, not the, the family members or everybody else they're serving, but they are coming to serve the people that, who have elected them and who are respecting the democratic process that has been established. Wow, uh, this is a very interesting. Uh, before I give you my last question, because we don't have a lot of minutes today, I want to ask you something very interesting. Uh, what the organization like Watch Democracy Grow organization or your organization can do to make some change uh, to the democracy in Africa? Very good question. Um, one thing we can do is, first of all, to come together as organization. I'm gonna give you some statistic that may surprise you. In all the immigrants that come to the United States, if you see the Chinese, or let's say the Asians, the Africans, the Europeans, and all of them, the most educated ones are the Africans. The most educated immigrants are coming in the United States are the Africans. But yet, when you look at the way the American system works, 
those who are the least organized to have an impact on the American political systems are the Africans. Why? Because we are not structured and we are not organized and we don't work with each other. So democracy grow. My organization, the National Congress for Democracy, all of these organizations that are here, many of them, if we can come together, first of all, and exchange uh, in how we can help each other to move the agenda of the African people and African descent, people of African descent, that's one of the reasons why we want to come together. And how can we do that? Well, we can affect the political, the political American system to basically pay attention to what is being done in Africa by some of our politicians, that one way. The other way is to put pressure for many different ways to put pressure on the African government. There are many processes in which we can prevent, uh, we can put pressure on the African government that are in Africa. And so all of this, there could be a strategy that we can uh, all analyze and we can all put together in order to have, um, to move the agenda, the political agenda uh, for our African countries. And so, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be brief and ask you a question this way. We can come together as African organization. We can influence the Congress. We can influence the White House. We can influence uh, the State Department. We can influence the IMF. You know, many of our African countries are coming here to the IMF or the type of uh, any, any other uh, uh, financial institution to try to borrow money. We can influence those organizations by being structured and organized here and by touching the right people so that we can, although we are outside of the country, of our own countries, but we can influence in some of the decision to an extent on what is being done in our African countries. Whatever you want, Africa Today is ready to organize a town hall to speak about issues regarding Africa. Remember, Africa Today is uh, online TV, and you can watch us on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and you can also watch us on our website, www.africatoday.com. If you cannot do that all, you can also download Africa Today app and you will be able to watch us directly from your phone. Please download our app and you will watch everything live from your phone. Okay, my last question is, mm -hmm. is not concerning democracy, it's concerning African people. Mm -hmm. We realize more African people like to fight each other. You create something, another one create the, next, the same thing next time. How we can fix that? For example, I see Ethiopian community, they are very successful. They don't fight each other. They, they help each other. Another French community, African community, they don't do that. They, you create something today, maybe you call that democracy something. Tomorrow you have a French come mm. back, he create the same thing. They just create democracy something one. Why is that? Maybe it's why we, we also cannot have a democracy in Africa. That's, a, that's, again, another very good question. <laughs> uh, how can Africans can work each other without uh, basically uh, fighting each other and stabbing one another in the back? A very good question. Um, well, every community, even the Ethiopian community that you just described, have issues. If you get involved just as I am, I have many friends in the Ethiopian communities. In fact, some of my best friends are in the Ethiopian community. They also have some issues. Every community have issues. No, if you if you watch Afri American community, they help each other. We live here in America. When you want to promote your stuff, American people will help you to help you to promote your stuff. Now here in America, when African try to promote even in WhatsApp all that stuff. The first people who will shut you down is your people. They will try to shut you down. They will bring more critique. Then they can, or they can bring something to help you to grow. Why is that? Maybe we egoism. Why? Why Selfishness. Is that? Okay. Oh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yes. There's some truth to what you're saying, right? What, what I was simply saying that first of all, let's establish that every community have issues. 
if you come closer to them, they have issues. So you are absolutely right that there's some issues that we have in the African community and it's too much. The only way I can describe that is that, you know, when, you, when you've been colonized, uh, when you've been brainwashed, yeah. when you uh, have been taught to hate your brother, uh, all of this uh, is, uh, is actually what part of what colonization did in our consciousness. There was psychological impact of colonization. And, and so unless we Africans look ourselves, just like the question you're asking, why are we acting this way? Only until we ask ourselves and do an introspection of ourselves and readjust our consciousness, our mental education, we will be acting up once, one against the other. And you're absolutely right to ask this question. We, are, we have countries in Africa, and those countries if you look at one country, they're fighting between each other, <laughs> yeah. tribal. But tribalism, which is also the result of colonization, because when colonization took place, the idea was to divide and conquer. The mentality of divide and conquer has not necessarily disappeared in our consciousness yet. So we keep on repeating some of our behavior that are the result of colonization. Of course, I'm not trying to blame uh, European or white people. I'm saying those behavior automatism have become part of our nature. And until we re-educate ourselves to look at ourselves as one people, regardless of our skin color or different tribe, see, we, that's the education that Africans need to do. And that education comes by, first of all, doing what you did, asking these questions, becoming conscious that there has been a, a consciousness. Uh, we have been affected. Our consciousness have been affected. We, we're just reacting as groups without understanding why we are reacting to act a certain way. So the way we can overcome that is always through education. Understand that people in Africa or people who have been colonized have been affected consciously on the subconscious level. They basically what um, uh, uh, Frank, Frank Fanon talks about the psychological impact of the consciousness of black people. People have written tremendously on this point. And so we as Africans who have been people who have been colonized who have been told that we are, you know, we have some issues. We need to look ourselves, introspect, re-educate ourselves so that we are not working against each other. And, I, and, and this is such an important question is that if you look at even our leaders today, they are stealing money, money they're taking, they're putting where? In European banks. They are stealing money, they're putting money outside of Africa. Right? This is the behavior. So this money that is going outside of Africa, what is it doing? What is, is, is it doing? It's reinforcing European banks. And those same European banks are letting us borrow money. We are borrowing our own money from European banks that have been stolen by some of our leaders. Recently, the president of Nigeria just brought back around $20, 20 billion. I think it's more than that. They were talking about $200 billion that has been stolen by leaders. African leaders placed not in African banks, European banks outside of Africa or American banks. And those same banks are the ones that are borrowing us money. So we're taking our own money out of the continent, putting them in European banks, and the European banks are letting us borrow our own money. But that is coming from where? From our leadership that is broken, with, that has no vision. And you are right. This is a profound issue that Africans need to understand and need to resolve in order for them, for us to grow up and improve the conditions of our people. Wow, thank, 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 thank you so much. Um, what you say is very powerful. I think we will 
have time again to speak more about that. It's not the last time we will speak, just we don't have a lot of time today. We already have a lot of speakers today. We have um, we have uh, Marie Henrietta, she was uh, already there with me today. And now you hear, you try to explain about the democracy on Africa. And what is your last word to the young people who want to become politicians, who want to do the democracy in Africa, who, what they can do to make some change? Your last word for that. Okay. First of all, I, I just believe that uh, politics is not for everybody. Okay. Unfortunately, in most of our African countries, everybody wants to get involved in politics because that is the quickest way, I guess, to make money or to move forward. But politics is actually is reserved for those who have the heart to serve. Politics should be a service to the people. People who, who, who get, in, get involved in politics, they don't get involved in politics because they want to make money and become rich or abuse their power or because they, they are egocentric, self-centered, uh, so selfish that they're just only thinking about themselves. But politicians are servants of the people. You are elected in political office to serve the people. Look at Obama. Obama, when, when you look at him when he entered, uh, uh, when he became president, eight years later, you see how he's changed. He had three, four hours of sleep every day because he was working for the people. It was a service to the people. It wasn't there for him to sleep for five, 10, 20 hours and just steal the money from the people. So politics should be for those who have the heart of the servant. Politics is for the servant. So my advice is for each one to do an introspection of who they are. Why are they entering into the politics? Is it because they want to serve or is it because they want to serve themselves? And most of our people who are entering into politics is because they want to serve themselves and also because the country is not giving them a chance to do other things business-wise or uh, educational-wise where they can have a decent way of of, of gaining or living their lives. And so people end up getting involved in politics. I know oh. it's the last word, but I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. you are, you're asking me some very <laughs> tough questions and I'm so passionate about it. And okay, so that's why I'm taking so the time. We will, have, we will have time to speak a lot about that. And I think it's not the last time you will be our guest. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much to be with us. And thank you so much, everyone who watching us now. I remember that you can watch us live on four platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and our website, www.africtoday.com. Com. If you watch us from Facebook, please share the link on Facebook, share to everyone. Everyone have to see this show. Oh, thank you to be with me and see you next Sunday. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right.